what Walter Russell Mead has done is identified four core and dominant national interests of the United States. Welcome to Conversations. I'm Muqtadar Khan. I'm the host of Conversations and I'm a professor at the University of Delaware. Today I'm going to talk to you about four approaches to American foreign policy. This is a particular typology designed by Professor Walter Russell Mead, who is the James Clark Chase Professor of Foreign Affairs and Humanities at Bard College, essentially a historian of American foreign policy. He's a distinguished scholar in American strategy and statesmanship for the Hudson Institute, so he dabbles in policy. He previously served as the Henry Kissinger Senior Fellow for U.S. Foreign Policy for the Council on Foreign Relations, and he also writes a regular column for the Wall Street Journal called Global Views. So essentially, he touches all the bases, academia, media, and the policy arena. And this typology of his uh, is from this book, it's nearly 20 years old, called Special Providence, American Foreign Policy and How It Changed the World. Uh, before I go any further, if this is the first time you're coming to Conversations, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let your friends and students and colleagues know about Conversations. I'm talking about this model or this typology of American foreign policy approaches is as, as a conversation starter in my classroom. I teach American foreign policy uh, and this semester I want to have a conversation about how Americans think about American foreign policy. So what Russell, Walter Russell Mead did in his typology is to identify four ways in which Americans think about American foreign policy. I want to take a step back and tell you why he claims he wrote this book. He says that most people argue that uh, American foreign policy is a failure. If you have watched how America withdrew from Afghanistan and handed it over to Taliban after a war of 20 years, uh, you can understand why many people think that American foreign policy often fails. But he argues that America has been very successful in becoming a major power and advancing its interest in the last 100 plus years. Uh, it started as a weak and small and insignificant power and became a global and dominant power. And he attributes this enormous power and influence that the United States wields in the international system essentially to a successful foreign policy. And that's why he is regarded very highly among some people who think that American foreign policy is a wonderful thing. So what are the four types of thinking that Walter Russell Mead is talking about? He identifies these and names them based on some of the founding fathers, well, not all of founding fathers, uh, based on former presidents, well, not all of former presidents. So basically he says there are four types of thinking. One is the Wilsonian, one is the Jeffersonian, one is the Jacksonian, and the last one is the Hamiltonian way of thinking about American foreign policy. Hamiltonian approach is named after Alexander Hamilton, Hamilton believed that the world is like a marketplace and the goal of every country or at least of the United States should be to essentially grow economically and become a powerful economy. He understood that at that time Great Britain was a major power and the reason why Great Britain was a major power was because not only was it able to project its power using its navy but was essentially powerful because of its tremendous economy. Basically Great Britain in the 18th and 19th century was looting the rest of the world through its colonies and therefore had a really strong economy and so Alexander Hamilton wanted the United States also to have a very strong economy and therefore he felt that this now, one of the reasons that or one of the goals of American foreign policy should be to promote trade, international trade, which would make America rich and influential. And therefore, he was for international trade and he was also for promoting American businesses. So he saw the U.S. government's role as promoting American businesses abroad. In the 19th century, in the 20th century, there was a way of thinking about international relations called mercantilism, where nations were seen as essentially mm, promoters uh, of their own industry, seeking new markets, uh, and promoting their own business, trying to make sure that their own businesses profit so that the country becomes richer. So in many ways, you could argue that the Hamiltonian approach is 
nothing but the mercantilist uh, approach to international relations. In the modern terms, you could argue that the neoliberal foreign policy, which promoted globalization, the World Trade Organization, uh, and free trade all over the world, was also pursuing the Hamiltonian uh, way of thinking and America's role uh, in essentially precipitating globalization and, and creating the World Trade Organization, World Bank, IMF, etc., can be seen as reflection of the Hamiltonian way of thinking about foreign policy in the United States. The Jeffersonian approach or way of thinking is more or less what we call as isolationist way of thinking. Uh, Jefferson hated Alexander Hamilton and he also hated businesses. He felt that the single most important goal of the United States was to protect its liberty. The liberty of its citizens, individuals were very important. And so essentially protecting and promoting democracy, no, sorry, not promoting democracy abroad, but protecting and strengthening democracy at home was the main purpose of the state and uh, and he felt that businesses, uh, powerful businesses, would have a corrupting impact on democracy. And therefore, he was neither interested in promoting businesses at home or abroad, especially industry. He was very much in favor of agricultural uh, economic development. Uh, so essentially, his approach was isolationist. He wanted the United States to stay away from the geopolitics, uh, the the Machiavellian uh, way of thinking of the Europeans, uh, and he just wanted the United States to focus on. It is clearly uh, the opposite to the Hamiltonian approach. There are still in the United States uh, many who think uh, from this isolationist perspective. There are new think tanks in Washington, D.C., who would more or less agree with, uh, with the Jeffersonian thinking, like the Quincy Institute and maybe even the Cato Institute. Uh, we saw some of the resonance of the Jeffersonian approach, even in President Biden's uh, early speeches in which he said one of our goals, uh, or one of his goals in his first term, is to strengthen democracy at home. We will not be able to project American values and promote democracy abroad if we have a weak democracy at home. And so you could argue that there is a Jeffersonian flavor uh, to the president's approach. He also ha held a summit of democracy uh, and he also talks about uh, the world as divided between those which are democracies and those nations which are autocratic. The third approach that Walter Russell Mead identifies is the Wilsonian approach. The Wilsonian approach is obviously named after President Wilson who came up with the with the idea of uh, the League of Nations and which then led on to the creation of the United Nations, etc. Uh, so the Wilsonian approach sees the world as a place that can be improved upon. They have a very positive view, not something uh, like the classical realists uh, like Thomas Hobbes and others who, who had a very negative uh, and pessimistic view of the world and human nature. Wilson, Wilson had a very positive view. He thought that we could make the world safe for democracy and that was the goal of American foreign policy uh, and subsequently the Wilsonian approach uh, essentially developed into what we would call today as the international institutionalist approach. We could build a better world by creating these institutions and so we have seen a plethora of international institutions uh, but then there are those who will point to these thousands of international institutions and regimes uh, and say they did not prevent Russia from invading Ukraine. But nevertheless, the primary goal of Wilsonians is to promote uh, democracy and peace internationally. And you can see that in, in some presidents and some administrations. Last, but certainly the least, way of thinking about American foreign policy is the Jacksonian. The Jacksonians are also somewhat isolationists. They believe in American honor and American interest, but they believe in a very strong America. They are defense, defense, defense oriented. They want America to be powerful and if anybody messes with America, they want to be brutal. They're not much concerned about democracy at home or democracy abroad. They're not concerned about minorities and their rights, but they want a powerful America that no one will mess with and, and, and it's this power, this capacity to punish other nations who would mess with the United States, gives the United States the opportunity under the Jacksonian way of thinking to remain isolationist uh, and preserve its culture and its values and its honor. Uh, 
uh, it is like what Donald Trump was advocating to some extent here that America first policy or America loan policy it's a very populist in its uh, orientation so anybody who wants to be a populist president may tend to have Jacksonian foreign policy and in the modern way of thinking I think to a great extent that the, the neocons would also fit into this box of the Jacksonian way of thinking. It is interesting and fascinating to think of them as in the names of the founding fathers and famous American presidents. Uh, but basically what Walter Russell Mead has done is identified four core and dominant national interests of the United States that he was able to witness uh, as he wrote the history of American foreign policy. Uh, in fact, these four interests are, are so generic uh, that you could argue that any democratic country could have any or all of these core national interests. Um, clearly, um, authoritarian regimes and monarchies cannot have these as core interests that I'm going to identify. So the four interests, uh, that national interests that um, are identified from these approaches is that for that one economy, property, and wealth is fundamental. A nation, uh, one of the main elements of nation, a nation's power comes from its economy, and therefore, saving, protecting, advancing, strengthening, developing uh, the economy is a core national interest function. So every country should have uh, in their elite, in their foreign policy making, uh, those who definitely have the Hamiltonian instinct towards foreign policy. Uh, Another way of thinking about the Jeffersonian approach is the promotion of democracy, the protection of democracy uh, and democratic values, uh, essentially domestic democracy, making sure that there is democracy at home. We really need uh, some leaders in the United States today who have the Jeffersonian instinct because America needs to strengthen its democracy. And for all countries which are democratic, especially now since the last decade or two, the uh, democracy is uh, in a recession. Uh, and so I think this is a core national interest of all democracies is to preserve their democracy. And now we move towards uh, projecting power and values overseas. Uh, so one uh, core interest of the United States has been to become a dominant power like Great Britain. Uh, and so it seeks to project power and therefore defense and military power becomes critical in trying to expand its power and strengthen its military. And so you need to have one or two Jacksonians, perhaps uh, someone with a Jacksonian instinct might make a good defense minister or would be a great uh, advocate of defense uh, strengthening and defense buildup. And finally, the Wilsonians, they are also critical. They believe in democracy as a value. They think that we can make the world a better place and they are also here to provide. So they provide a moral purpose to American foreign policy. So I think that even though there are these four typologies, four types of way of thinking, I think the most prudent way of thinking about American foreign policy would be to, to have all these four perspectives uh, included in the American approach to foreign policy and these four core national interests that I have identified uh, are worth defending and promoting and preserving. So I hope you found this uh, this conversation beneficial, uh, useful. Try to use it in your classrooms if you're a professor. Uh, and uh, please subscribe to Conversations, to the channel, like the video, share it with your friends. And until next time, uh, be happy, be safe.